Hey peeps, welcome back. So today we are going to be discussing Tesla versus Kony and which one is a better long-term investment in terms of dividends and price appreciation. Let's get it. So the first thing I want to bring up is the yield max charts on both Tesla and Kony. <clears throat> so as you guys can see, I have Tesla on the left, Kony on the right. Um, Kony has been moving up, uh, which is kind of odd because Bitcoin hasn't really been doing much of anything. So I find that to be a bit curious. I think it's probably investors buying into this thing before the dividend payment. We all know that at least we thought that the dividend payment was going to, the first one would come out in September. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to wait until next month. So it is what it is. You know, it didn't come out yet and we'll just have to keep waiting and see when it does. Now, if you guys look at Tesla on the left, you guys can see that we actually had a nice big fat gap up. So we did bounce at least in the immediate short term off of the support that I mentioned to you guys. Um, if we take a look at the support level, you guys can see over and over that this thing has repeatedly bounced off of the support level multiple times. So let's go take a look at the chart of Tesla. Oh, before I do, um, you guys can see here that we're up actually up 4% on Tesla in one day, which is definitely nice. I don't know about y'all, but it's nice to see, you know, my, um, the amount of money that I have invested go back up. And I'm sure a lot of other people feel the same way too. So now let's take a look at Tesla. As you guys can see, Tesla is up 10% today, which reinforces the idea that there is capped upside potential in these yield max funds. So Tesla goes up 10%. Tesla was up 4%. Keep that in mind, okay? Now, if we're taking a look at the big picture here, you guys can basically see that we're pretty much heading straight back up to this peak here, which is pretty much in line with this previous resistance here. So Tesla itself may or may not get stopped Again, somewhere between $300 to $310. If it blasts straight through that, then we're pretty much going to go up to the $390 to $415 range, which would be amazing for both Tesla and Tesla holders. So let's dig in here. Um, I actually just got home from work, so I'm not really sure what this gap up is about. But as you guys can see, we had this monstrous gap up. Again, I told you guys before that my day or not day trading, my swing trading strategy is basically looking for a golden cross and a retest off of that. And then basically buy in right here. And then boom, we expect this thing to bounce, right? Well, that's pretty much what happened here. So from the gap up price to basically the peak of this candle, pretty much on point with what it says here, about 10%. So um, with this thing bouncing off of here, I'm kind of more or less expecting it to go up at least to fill this gap right in here. So at the very least, it'll go up to 280, maybe 290 before hitting some um, actual resistance. Because when it comes to stocks um, and the indices, whenever there's a gap left behind, it typically likes to come back and fill the gap. So... Enough of that being said, so let's go ahead and get into the dividend and compare the two. And then once I'm done with the dividend portion, I'm going to go over another metric with you guys and kind of give you a macro perspective of how exactly to see these things. So this is um, this is not Tesla's most recent payout. I'm well aware of that but it has the dividend percentage yield 70% on it, which makes it very easy to do the math on Kony. So let's compare the two in terms of uh, basically what you would get between the two with passive income. So Tesla currently, well, as of last month, I should say, was paying 83 cents a share. Um, again, we don't actually know what the payment is going to be on Kony yet, so we'll have to wait and see on that. I do kind of have a theory on what I think is going to be the dividend payment for that, but um, we'll just say that you had 100 shares in Tesla. Very small amount, in my opinion, especially with the price being so cheap. You get $83 a month. <clears throat> now, um, here's Kony. You guys can see there's no available dividend. 
If you go to the Yield Max website, you're not going to see a dividend either. So I theorized in a previous video on uh, what I believe Coney's dividend payment would be, which in my opinion will be probably somewhere between 90 to 110% because of the volatility. Um, so if this, uh, this payment on August would have been about 70%. So we're basically going to do some math here. We're going to take 83 cents and we're going to divide it by seven, which would basically divide it in increments of 10% each. And then we're going to times this by nine. So we'll be more conservative here. We'll say that Coney's pays 90% instead of 110%. So you get about a dollar six per dividend, which we did actually see on Tesla right back here. As you can see, it's pretty much in line with that. So you get 100 shares of Tesla, you get about 83 bucks um, a month. You get 100 shares of Coney at 90%. You get $106. If we were to take that, uh, 10% 10, 10 increments and times it by 10, which would be, or not 10, um, 11, which would be on the high end, 100, 110%, you get about $1.32 a month. So let's do the cost basis comparison between the two. So Coney, Coney currently sits at 2072 per share and Tesla's at 40, 60, 1462. For me personally, I always like to buy shares that are cheaper because that means you get more upside and you also get more income for the amount invested, but to each of their own. So we'll say you bought $1,000 worth of Tesla and you paid a price of $1,462. You get 68 shares for your 1000 bucks. And on Kony, you paid the same thousand dollars for Kony, but you have to pay more for these shares because they're more expensive. So instead, you would get forty-eight shares. Now let's do a comparison here with the seventy percent previous yield on Tesla. This one right here, since this was pretty much, or I should say, is pretty much about the average. You guys can see the payments usually somewhere between eighty to ninety cents. So we'll do times point eight. 303. And if we um, got to go back through the history here, or maybe no, it's not on this one. So $1.32 would be 110%. So we'll do times 132. Oh, whoops. Um, so 4826 times. 132. Let's try this one more time. So you would actually get paid slightly more on Kony than you would on Tesla, but the difference here is that you're paying roughly about six dollars a share more for Kony. Now, if we change this and we say instead of getting paid 110% on Kony, you're now going to get paid 90%. Again, being conservative here. You get 96 cents a share. Um, oh, my bad. Yeah, it's actually uh, it's a dollar oh six. So let's redo this. So 48.26 times a dollar oh six. So basically, for Coney, if the yield is 110 percent you're going to get paid more money but you're also going to pay more for the shares if the yield is 90 percent you're going to get less money than tesla and you're still going to pay more for the shares okay so we've gone over the dividends we've gone over the amount of money invested and how much it would buy you in terms of shares and dividends per month so the next thing i want to go over is um taking a look at the price of crypto or uh, Bitcoin specifically. So um, as you guys know, we went over a video previously comparing or basically taking a look at Kony and Bitcoin. Uh, the, the two pretty much mirror each other. But the reason why we're going to pick the Bitcoin chart instead of Coinbase, and you guys can do a cross comparison between the two. If you have trading views, see for yourself. It's pretty much, it's literally synonymous, Coinbase and Bitcoin, the movement of the two are. Um, but Bitcoin has a longer history, so we can actually go back and look at um, Bitcoin's history over the long run and basically see 
what the price or how the price action works over the years. Okay, so we're on the weekly here. We're going to scroll out a lot, actually. Okay, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the halving here. As you guys can see, May 2020, that's when the halving took place. Roughly about five to six months later, Bitcoin started popping off. Uh, it wasn't until roughly about December that Bitcoin broke its previous all-time highs. So basically, I would say pretty much from December of 2020 when Bitcoin broke its highs till about November of 2021 was pretty much how long the bull market lasted. If you want to include November in here, basically when it was pushing to all-time highs, we'll say the bull market itself was a whole year. Okay, with a major 50% drawdown along the way. And I will get into why I'm mentioning all this in a minute. So from November 2021, we basically had like a year-long bear market where we pretty much went straight down, straight down, straight down, and then we bottomed out here and we started moving back up and now we're kind of going flat. So... The thing you guys have to understand about crypto and Bitcoin in relation to Kony, because Kony is based on Coinbase and Coinbase is moved synonymously with the price of Bitcoin, is Bitcoin has what's known as four year cycles. Okay. So it has a year long bull run, typically after the Bitcoin halving. And then once the bull runs over, you have a year long bear market. And then you usually have a year of sideways chop. And then you'll have like about six to 12 months of Bitcoin slowly moving up in price into the halving. And then right before the Bitcoin bull run starts, Bitcoin will either chop sideways along with the rest of the market. Well, typically, actually, when Bitcoin chops sideways, altcoins usually go down. They don't usually go up. And then Bitcoin will move back into the basically into the previous all-time highs to start the new bull market. So it's very cyclical in nature. Bitcoin, pretty much there's only a bull market one year out of every four years that this thing has a cycle, okay? Whereas if we take a look at something like the SPX, which I just did a video on, if you guys have not seen that video, please go watch it. It has a lot of important information. There's a lot to learn about the cycles of the stock market that could really help you significantly in the long run as an investor. But if we zoom out here, you guys can see that the stock market works entirely different than crypto. So basically stocks from 2009 all the way until 2021. So 12 years straight of pretty much nothing but upwards momentum. If, if you want to include this basically black swan event here, that was technically a technical recession, which means that we were more than 20% off of the all-time highs. And then we had another one here. But if you're not including the Black Swan event, it's 12 years of straight up. If you are including it, we had basically, um, it looks like about 11 years of straight up or 10 and a half, 11 years, something like that. So stocks generally... If we keep scrolling back, you'll see the same thing. You got 2008, so basically 2003 to 2007. So we had four years of straight up. You get this dip here, 2000 to 2002. Before that, we pretty much were going up for about 15, 16 years. So crypto and stocks are very much different. Why do I bring this up? Because Tesla is based, or Tesla and Tesla are based in the stock market, but Kony and Coinbase in Bitcoin are based on crypto. So here's my thesis on Coinbase and Tesla. Tesla, in my opinion, is a great long-term hold. Reason being is because it moves synonymously with the stock market and the stock market when it's in a bull run usually goes into bull runs for five, 10, 15 years straight. Okay, before there's a major correction or, you know, 20, 30, 40% downside. But crypto, on the other hand, with Kony and Coinbase, um, basically those things only move every four years. Okay, so you got a year up, 
a year of 80% down, which if you're holding Kony at the top of the bull market in crypto, you're probably going to get dumped on by like 80%. So it's Kony is great to have before a Bitcoin bull run. But as soon as the bull runs over, I'm getting out of Kony. I'm not going to hold it regardless of whether it pays income or not. I basically would sell all of my Kony at the top of the Bitcoin bull run, move that position out into Tesla or some of their yield max fund or something else because I already know what's coming. You know, there's going to be a massive year long 70, 80, 90% correction in crypto. And that's going to happen to Coinbase. It's going to happen to Kony. You can pretty much expect it. Now, the thing that could change that is, you know, time does create diminishing returns, which means that the bull markets could potentially be um, a little bit lower in how much you get in terms of gains on each cycle moving forward. And if it gains mass adoption, that could create a whole entirely different story. But as of right now, we basically have to work with what we have, which is the four year cycles. So anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this comment. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. And I will see you all later. Peace.